Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a first class book which practitioners will find helpful. I think other ordinary lay members of the public will find it very helpful too. It's about vexatious litigants, the law relating to them and also the application and the uh, obtaining of uh, civil restraint orders. It's a practitioner's handbook and it's been written by two people, David uh, Giles and Maurice uh, Refat. It's come to us from Wildy Simmons and Hill Publishing. Elizabeth and I thought this was a first class book. We've given it a title for our review, a distinguished and highly practical handbook for all involved in vexatious litigant matters. Now this is an area that does cause a lot of emotion and a lot of concern. So it's useful to know exactly where we are with this vexatious uh, litigants and uh, what you can do with them. Let me just say right at the beginning that you've got to be pretty extreme to get one of these orders placed against you. It's People quite often think that because one person is a troublemaker that you can say they're vexatious litigants. It's not like that. It's, it's much more complex. Let's look at the book first of all. There's the front cover. Uh, it's come from Wildy Simmons and Hill. There's the spine. And then you can see on the back, there's a little bit of information. If I bring it back a bit, you can see the information that's available there explaining uh, what in fact uh, the book is about. I've borrowed some of the comments because in fact the book itself is very, very helpful. It's a hardback as you can probably see. It runs to <clears throat> just under 200, well around about 200 pages. There are some useful appendices at the back. There is a very short uh, index which you can see um, there. It's page numbered, so, but there's not a lot of uh, detail in the index. As I say, there are some useful appendices at the back. At the front, you've got, there's the front page. You've then got the, the basic information from Wild is there. Then you've got a, a short forward dated 2013. I'm recording this actually in 2017, at the beginning of the year. The copyright's 2014, so it's been with us for a little while, this book. There's the contents section. There are nine chapters and two appendices covering the civil procedurals. Uh, clearly, it may, I don't think there's been a lot of change recently, but there will be some new cases. There's the table of cases there. Then some, you've got a little bit of uh, legislation. Then you've got a little bit of statutory instrument, of course. Then after that, we get into the, there are some, in, within the statutory instruments, you've got some family procedure rules and various other things. Then you go straight into the introduction itself. And uh, it, it goes, it looks very much um, at what a vexation litigant really will be as far as the law is concerned. There is uh, paragraph numbering, which you can see on the side, on the left-hand side as you're looking at it, and you do have quite a lot of footnotes, which has the case law uh, included. I thought this was a very good book, um, and it, but it is an area of law which is one that one should be very careful with, I think, because uh, people do tend to feel the other side are vexatious. Naturally, that's bound to be, if you think about it, a, a quite logical assumption on certain occasions. But uh, this is to stop people who are frankly a pain in the neck and they are people who are abusing the system. And I think in fact in this jurisdiction in England and Wales we're very reasonable. We allow people a tremendous amount of latitude because we're a free society and I think it should remain that way. But there are occasions when people have to be basically stopped because they're wasting uh, time and money. I've come across a few in my time, uh, but as I've said, the, um, the level to which you've got to get to, the, the sort of fences you've got to jump over, are very high indeed. So what do we say about the book? Well, we say this. David Giles and Morris uh, Refat are from One Grays Inn Square. Uh, that's a Grays Inn. And are, we think are to be gra congratulated for undertaking this important task of giving us an easy to read book about vexatious litigants. Their main purpose, of course, has been to produce a work which is entertaining, informative, interesting and provocative, but also of practical assistance to the professional lawyer or litigant in person, of which we've, of course, got uh, many. And they do that, we think, in the most effective way. Can I just say that the number of litigants in person has risen dramatically since the changes to legal aid 
and the fact, of course, with economic downturn and so forth, there are bound to be problems. So we do actually have very many more litigants in person. That is not, though, therefore, by definition, necessarily going to affect people who are tagged with the vexatious litigant um, title. So therefore, do be aware that um, just because we have an increase in number of, of unrepresented parties, that, that that's going to change things. It hasn't that much. It just takes a lot longer to dispose of, of hearings. So this book, called Vexatious Litigants and Civil Restraint Orders, is a detailed and highly practical work on the, what is a growing area of law and its current complex procedures. They are complicated because they're designed that way. In other words, you've got to have a really strong case in order to succeed. And so the publishers really are catering here for a readership which includes lawyers, judges and the civil court litigant himself or herself. And as with many of the Wildy series of titles for practitioners, this one gives us a one-stop guide and concise explanation of the law relating to the court's jurisdiction to control vexatious and or unmeritorious court claims and applications. And as I've said, the difficulty is that everybody might think that the opposition have an unmeritorious court claim and so forth. So you've got to get, it's a fine dividing line and therefore, as I said, the, uh, the bar is very high in order to um, stop people. The book begins with a useful historic uh, perspective on the origins of and responses to vexatious litigation and Giles and Refat analyse the legislation and rules set up to meet this threat in the legal system of today, primarily under the civil restraint order provisions of the Civil Procedural CPR and Section 42 of the what is now called the Senior Courts Act 1981. And it is an important and developing jurisdiction today with so many unrepresented parties in court, an action which should not therefore necessarily be uh, undertaken lightly. Certainly that's uh, my opinion and I think that of, of many people within the legal profession. There's an excellent use of case law uh, authorities throughout which develop and explain the court's jurisdiction and the powers under statute and the procedural rules. And we found the case management strategies, that's in sort of towards the middle of the book, um, uh, for preventing and controlling the worst excesses of obsessive litigants, very helpful for the purposes of balance. The authors explain how parties who are facing actual or threatened restrictions on their rights of access to the courts can resist and or respond to the type of applications made and orders granted. Also they cover in some detail the deficiencies, weaknesses and limitations of the current rules um, regime uh, relating to vexatious litigants and uh, litigation generally. And the way the authors have produced this information I think will be of great help to a wide range of readers facing such orders. As I say, there are a larger number. That's because at, at some one stage we were having much more, uh, much larger numbers of people suing. Um, I think things have now res restored to a little bit more of a semblance of, of sense as to trying to sue only when you really have to. Obviously the basic concept the courts have adopted is, is alternative resolution, uh, dispute resolution. And I think that does work in some cases. So the authors also cover how the tribunal system and family courts have developed their own rules and procedures to combat abuses of process perpetrated by vexatious litigants, which are seen by many to be on the rise. So I said, uh, it do does depend on your point of view, but uh, generally speaking, there are a relatively small number of people involved in this, um, because at the end of the day, people are going to get emotional and get, going to be very unhappy about um, the way the other side's behaving, but you've got to draw the line somewhere, and it, this is for people who've stepped over the line, if I can put it that way. Another useful approach by the writers is how they trace through the case studies the development of the party's litigation timetable from the beginning of their uh, litigious careers, as they call it, as they blossom into fully developed vexatious litigants. An interesting way of looking at how these litigants are effectively created in fact, basically, they're named because they, they become a nuisance. The recent austerity cuts, then, to the civil justice budgets have put more stress on ensuring the correct and legitimate use of court time with the limited financial resources available. And the courts have, with greater frequency, resorted to making orders restricting the ability of litigants to persistently misuse the court processes. That's the purpose. The underlying um, theme, then, is that 
of the book is to offer practical guidance to the court, the practitioner, and the self-representing litigants in person with coverage of the law and rules in a special jurisdiction. And always, of course, refer to the most recent copy of the White Book. The new one for 2017 is out in March, and it's certainly something you should, if you are facing this problem, you should be aware of the most recent case law and the most recent uh, rules. We consider that this book and the detail it's given uh, to the type of application and the relevant procedures existing under the Act, that's the Senior Courts Act, and in the civil restraint order regime, um, it's a first-class book. Um, obviously it also covers uh, appeals and judicial review against restraint orders that are made and this gives the work of course greater importance for those uh, facing what is a difficult jurisdiction. I think the authors deal with it brilliantly. The publication date, as I said, is actually 2014, and I'm recording this a couple of years later. But I think the book itself is, is still very current. There it is. Very grateful to um, Wild East Hill and Simmons for producing it, because it's an important area. And if you just go to Amending or Discharging Civil Restraint, or Chapter 7, again, the likelihood is that people who are facing these orders may not have a lot of money left, probably because they spent most of it on litigating. Um, now the reason therefore is that this will give them some indication of what they can do. The paragraph numbering and the footnoting is there, very noticeable, uh, very helpful too. Civil restraint orders in other courts and tribunals. I thought that was a useful addition to the book, uh, so that it has a much wider coverage than just say the High Court or the County Courts. Thank you anyway to everybody concerned for an excellent publication. Bye-bye.